But we are glad you're here this morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Message this morning will be a little bit different than normal. You'll probably leave here saying he is the craziest preacher in the world. But uh, it'll be all right. Me and Brother Todd we and Brother Donnie, we did uh, sacrifice those lambs yesterday. And and uh, in the process of, uh, of taking those lambs' life, Todd did cut me with his knife. And uh, he said, you know, he was sorry and all that. But I think he was out to take a finger off or something. But uh, he got me with that old big blade he had. I told him, I said, Todd, you're going to cut yourself. And I said, let me help you. And like crazy, I stuck my hand down there where he had his. And guess who got cut? It was me. But we are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We got a, the altar of incense this morning here on the front here. We're going to use that as an illustration, part of the illustration this morning. Uh, Sister Lisa's mama and daddy built that for tonight's service. Brother West and Sister Kathy. And, uh, uh, it looks like the real McCoy. I done been online and checked this thing out. It's, it's, it's top notch. They've done an outstanding job. I want you to get in. We're going to open up with prayer this morning. And let's stand all over the house. Let's stand. Let's open up with prayer this morning. I know we got a lot of people out. We've had some deaths and some families. But, you know, we're still here to have church. Amen. And let's have church this morning. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for letting us assemble ourselves together in this house. And I ask you, Lord, for the next few moments, God, to come and join and meet with us, Father. We ask you, Lord. To help us, Lord, the ones that sick, I ask you, Father, to bring healing to their bodies. Lord, the ones that have passed on, Father, I ask you to touch their families this morning, God. And I ask you, Father, Lord, to reach down and touch Norman and Kathy this morning, her sister this morning, God. We ask you, Father, to touch her body, Lord, this morning. You know the situation, God. You know the healing that she needs in her body. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Get in and help us sing this morning.
I know this is a little different than what we normally have on Sunday mornings. I was telling Mark it makes you bless, which we're still blessed that we have Brother Todd on the guitar and Ryan on the drums, but we have three piano players, and for different reasons, Sister Jean was going to homecoming today. She plays the piano. She couldn't be with us. My mother plays. She's sick in the bed. And then Sister Sarah is with her family, um, with, with Ashley that passed away. But I thought, you know, the enemy may want to stop us, but as long as we put forth an effort, he's going to bless it. And I was thinking there's churches that I know of that has to do everything by screen. And I thought, Lord, it makes me have more compassion now to know that when you're depending on different musicians, if you don't have them, you feel like you're handicapped. And I thought, well, that's what the devil wants us to feel like is that we're handicapped. We can't do things, but we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. And uh, we're going to have Brother Todd do a special today and Brother Donnie. So sometimes when things happen, it makes us get out of our comfort zone because I'm definitely not one to lead songs because my voice is low. But we all got a job to do. If we put forth an effort and work together, then God's going to bless us today. And my husband's want me to hush, so come on. Amen. We're going to come to you this morning with our tithes and offerings. Amen. Which one of y'all going to sing first? Brother Todd? He's singing for money, son, so sing good. Amen. Okay. Let's do that right after we get through this offering. Let's go back and take a special offering this morning. This will be for our youth. So uh, we appreciate you giving to this church. Appreciate the tithes and the offerings that you give. It keeps the church and the ministry going forward here. And we do appreciate it. God will honor your giving. God will honor your giving. Let's pray over the offering. Father, we do thank you this morning, God, for this opportunity and this time of worship. This is a time of worship that we worship you with what you have given us, what you have put before us, God. And I'm asking, Father, Lord, to bless the ones here this morning, the ones that give, the ones that don't give. God, I ask it all alike, God. But most of all, Father, we come here this morning to worship you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
God is going to do it. But it's just, Sister Darlene, thought it's you had come in to, what did you say, Sister Darlene? Concert. Brother Donnie is singing this song this morning. I think it's number six. Right, yeah. Brother Donnie? Number six, and he's going to be on Sister Jean's mic, Brother Randy. In Bethlehem, help me reach little land. The cross on Golgotha held the nails that pierced his hand. Satan said, I'm what I'm told. The tomb said, I'll hold him. And then said, he's my Have your Bibles this morning. We're going to start in the book of Genesis, chapter number three. We are glad that you're here this morning. Uh, got a few illustrations. We're going to start out. But Genesis chapter number three. Want to read verse number 21. It says. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skin to clothe them. Actually, now I want you to turn to the book of Exodus. Chapter number 30. Verse 35. And they shall make... It a, per a perfume 
of confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. Revelation chapter number 5 and verse number 8, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them a harp and a golden vial full of the odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you this morning. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to help us to minister to the Word of God. We ask you, Father, to reach down and touch us this morning, touch me and my body. I need healing in my body this morning, Father. Most of all, Lord, anoint me to preach your word this morning, that this word comes alive and it comes real to us this morning, and it changes our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yesterday morning, we proceeded to take the lives of two lanes. And uh, my wheel started turning, and Brother Todd drove up, and he uh, had the lambs on his trailer, and they was blating, and he continued to blate. But one thing I saw is when he grabbed the first lamb, and once he grabbed that lamb and picked that lamb up, it never said anything else. It never blated. Never cried. Once he picked it up off that trailer, I don't know if you realize that, Brother Todd, but it never said anything once it became off the ground, when it became helpless. It never said anything. So my wheels began to turn, and Brother Todd did cut me yesterday. I wasn't joking about that. He did cut me. But we uh, we sacrificed two lambs yesterday, and it really began to stir me on the inside. I, my mind went back to Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 21 where it said that, that, that God made coats to cover Adam and Eve. And he just didn't do this just so they could stay warm or they'd be covered. But God can't look upon sin. And in the Old Testament, you had to make an atonement, a sacrifice, for your sins, that they would be covered. You need to understand, in the Old Testament, God, you had to cover your sins. For, for You had to use a sacrifice to cover your sins. Jesus came, and he became the sacrifice to forgive our sins. You with me? And sometimes I think in a day's life, we, 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 we at the point, we ain't worried about the forgiving. We just want it covered up where nobody else will find out about it. And and uh, my wife's probably going to kill me. I don't know if she looked up under my tarp or not. But uh, this morning, if I can get all this down here, I know he didn't, but he did. Now, I don't know about you, but when I begin to do things biblically that's in the Bible and do it like was in the Old Testament. I begin to think about how God, when he, when he stood there before Adam and Eve and they had committed the sin and he knew that he had to cover them. So there was, if you can study this out, and from my understanding, he took the lives of two lambs and he took the, the hide of those lambs and he took those hides and and he, uh, he draped them over Adam and one over Eve. Why did he do that, Brother Mark? It's because that blood of that lamb covered them. This still fresh. This suit's got a hole in the back of it, so it don't matter. But he draped that, that bloody lamb skin. And I believe he draped it this way, Brother Brian Connor, where you could see the, 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 the life that was given because of sin. Well, it was just a lamb. That lamb hadn't done anything. That lamb had just been created. 
was innocent. But because of sin, God said, I got to cover that sin. So I got to take the life of an animal to cover that sin. That looks pretty gross, don't it? Looks pretty bad. But you know, God had a, he had a plan. It didn't catch him off guard that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. He says that our God knows all things. He had a plan, and this, this, these lambs that we sacrificed yesterday, that we took their lives for our, our Passover meal tonight, is, is to, to show that we don't have to give an, 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 an a, a animal offering anymore, but we, we, we got Jesus that took the place of that lamb. That innocent little lamb, I got wool all over me in my jacket now. That innocent little lamb that, that did nothing. You know, when we begin to think about the sins that we commit every day and how Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins, I wonder myself, does he have to go back through that pain? All, every time we sin, does he feel that pain again? I, I do a lot of thinking. I, I kind of think, I call it thinking outside the box. Now, how many crazy folks will bring them sheep skins up in the church that just been skinned out yesterday? I don't know if they did it. But it lets me know that, that God had a plan, and he's got a plan for you. And those lambs gave their life. In Genesis chapter number 3, those lambs gave their lives to cover the sin that Adam and Eve had committed. Then we go on forward to Exodus chapter number 30. See, God had a plan. In Exodus chapter number 30, and you start reading in verse number 1, it begins to tell us about the altar of incense. We really don't pay much attention about this altar of incense. We think about the brazen altar, the altar where they, they sacrifice the, the lamb. We think about those altars and the wash basin and, the, and the, uh, the, the menorah. We think about the Ark of the Covenant. But we really, we, we, we actually look over the altar of incense. But the altar of incense it's one of the, I think, is to us, is the most important. And here I want to describe how it was made. And I don't know if he went right by these exact measurements. It looks like he does. I didn't pull a tape measure on it. He says, and they shall make an altar to burn incense upon of cinnamon wood. Shall they make it? A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a breadth thereof. Four square shall it be. Two cubits shall it be in height thereof. The horns thereof shall be the same. Now them horns are the same. I saw them before he spray painted. They all cow horns. All four of them are the same. He, he, he went, he went, they went right by the Bible. It says, and they shall overlay it with pure gold. Now I don't know if that's pure gold. If it is, we're going to have a fight at the service. And the top thereof, uh, and the sides thereof, and around about, and the horns thereof, and they shall make unto, they, unto it a crown of gold around it, around about, and two gold rings that make to the under of the crown of it by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides and it, of it shall make it, and they shall be for the placing of the stage to bury it. That's the two rings, that's the four rings right here. Four rings, they two on this side, and there's a stage laying on this on the floor. Those staves go in that altar, and that's how they carry that altar. And they shall make staves of cinnamon wood and lay it over with gold. And they shall put it before the veil. This is the part now I want you to get. They shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat. That is over the testimony which will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. And when he depresses the lamp, 
he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamp at evening, he shall burn incense upon it. And perpetual incense, incense before the Lord throughout your generation. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon. Only certain incense shall be put on this thing, on this altar. No burnt sacrifices, nor meat offerings. Neither shall ye pour drink offerings upon thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon this the horns of it in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once the year shall he make atonement upon it thereout your generation. It is the most holy unto the Lord. This altar of incense, see God had a plan. When Adam and Eve sinned, he had to kill two, two lambs to cover their sin, so the lambs became the sacrifice. We get to Moses this time. We get here at Moses. God tells them how to build this altar of incense. And this altar of incense sits in front of the Holy of Holies. There's a big curtain. And this altar sits in front of that curtain and the Holy of Holies would be back here. And that altar sits there and, and, and the priest comes in. Aaron comes in. It's time of Aaron. And he lights the incense thereof. And he says, you don't put anything else but what I told you to put on this. And I want to tell you this morning that scripture I read in verse 35 where it said pure and holy. It says that those incense had to have salt in the bottom of them to make it pure. That salt is very significant. He says we are the salt of the world. Okay, we got salt in the, in the, the altar of incense. At the bottom, the heart of this thing is salt. Salt makes a difference. You've heard me preach about salt. It, it makes a difference. But he said he began to burn these incense, and I got borrowed a lighter from Brian Connell. He ain't going to be able to smoke today. Here it is. And uh, they lit these altar, these incense. I'm going to light one here. I'm going to try to light one. And it'll begin to smoke. Bible said in Revelation chapter number 5 verse number 8 that that smoke carries up to heaven from the prayers of the saints and God is there and it says in four and twenty elders have vows and they have the prayers of the saints in those vows from the altar of incense that priest, I want to get serious with you now, that priest in the morning time, he would come in and he would light this thing. And he would sit and stand before this. He would pray for Israel. And as he would pray for Israel, that odor, that, that smoke would make it go to heaven. And, and God would smell. Let me, let me break it down because you ain't getting it. When you get up in the morning, I remember my grandmother, we'd stay with my grandmother, and she'd get up about 4 o'clock, she'd start rattling them pots and pans. And about 5 o'clock, you could smell that bacon frying. You could smell them grits cooking. And you could smell them eggs just rolling. You could smell all that. You know what happened? Something inside of you begin to move. My guts would begin to growl up in the bed. Can't wait to get to the kitchen to get hold of some of them cat head biscuits. Because that was an odor that, 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 that pulled me. You follow what I'm saying? Ain't nothing no better than, than than smelling a good old pound cake cookie. You have senses. Your, your body has senses. There are certain things that just attract you to it. Well, that's what happens here. This here, this odor that God has created, he told them what to put in it, how to make it, and that odor, he loves to smell that odor, and he wants to smell that odor, and now prayers go up to what he's smelling. You, you understand what I'm trying to tell you this morning? Let me break it down to you. Some of you still ain't got it. That 
altar of incense set before the Holy of Holies. We in the Old Testament could not go inside the Holy of Holies but one time a year, and that was the priest. And if he went in with sin, he came out dead. So every day they would go to the altar of incense. Every day they would go to the altar of incense and, and they would pray. And those, those, those incense would carry the prayers up. Let me break it down to you this way. The Holy of the Holies is a big old door. That altar of incense is the doorbell. When you ring that doorbell in anybody's house, if they home, what they going to do? They're going to come to the door. Unless you look out the window and see it's a bill, somebody collecting bills, you, you won't come. You'll just hide back and hope they didn't hear you walk across that wooden floor. So this here is the doorbell to ring heaven where God will hear your prayer. You follow me this morning? So, I'm like Sister Kathy. I don't know why we've done away with this through the years of the Bible. We don't have this in our church anymore, physically. Spiritually we should, but sometimes I think we need to go back and have the real stuff where we can get back to where we need to be. Because we have forgot how to ring the bell. We forgot how to ring the bell to get to heaven. That priest would come, Aaron would come, and he would begin to pray, and, and it, would, it would begin to, to go up to heaven, and God would hear those prayers of those priests. Well, today, we ain't got to be priests. All we got to do is be saved, because Jesus Christ took the place of this lamb. His blood that was shed changed our lives. And the Bible says, that Aaron would go to these horns once a year. Y'all know what this is? The Bible says once a year Aaron would go and he take from the sacrifice, the blood from the sacrifice, once a year, and he would apply it to the horn of the altar for atonement for the sins of the people. Every time we come to the altar, every time we come and ask God to forgive us, you know what happens? That blood gets applied. That blood gets applied all over again. And it changes our lives. It changes where we're at. It changes how we think, how we walk, and how we talk. When you start applying that blood. Yesterday I... I, I, I've been studying this for about a couple of weeks, but uh, they would take and that blood would just coat over these horns, and I didn't really understand that till yesterday. When we sacrificed those lambs, when we cut their throat and the blood came out, within about 10 minutes, that blood had jailed over, and you could pick it up like jello. Then I understood how he could take it, and he could just wipe it around that horn, and it would stay dead. I, I, I didn't understand that till yesterday. He could just take it like jello and wrap it around that horn. But they would apply the blood to that altar of incense for the atonement of our sins. Oh, tell you, Jesus Christ gave his life that we might be saved. That our lives could be different. That we could have a place in heaven. And your prayers are still being sent up. If you'll just go ring the doorbell, he'll answer the door. If you'll just go and make your way up that walkway. I was watching the other night, the other night and they was, they was pulling a walkway with a wheelbarrow. And I knew it, it couldn't be right because they'd done it in no time. 
I don't know if y'all watched it. It took less than 30 minutes to do that Coach Spark way. You know about some hard work? It's a big concrete and poor walkway as long as they pour it. Now, I, I think they brought a cement truck and pulled all of it except that little spot they showed. But he did that to have a way to get to his house that's finished without walking in mud and dirt and grass. And You know, God has paved a way for us to get to that door. God has made a way for us to get to this altar of incense. And I don't know why it's so hard for us to get to the point uh, of ringing the bell. I don't understand that, but it's so hard for us to get to the point of ringing the bell and say, God, I need some help. God, I need you to help me this morning. God, I got problems. I got things that nobody knows about, and I need you to fix it this morning. That's what God does. So, Brother Mark, I don't believe all that. Well, you don't believe the Bible. Because in the book of Revelation, it says that they are up there, and they have the prayers of the saints in a box. might not understand nothing I said this morning, but one thing I want you to do understand, Jesus Christ died for your sin. He gave his life just like those lambs did yesterday. They didn't say anything. They gave their life. I've always heard about it. I always, I always wondered. I've killed goats for 40 things. A blade after you cut the thing, they killed the blade for you. But that lamb never said anything for it to have put up. I begin to think about Jesus being put on the cross. Once he was hung up on that cross, all he said, it was finished. He never complained. He never said anything. It was finished. Yes, he talked to the to the thief on the cross. You know what he told him? You'll be with me in paradise. Huh? He was still reaching souls. Reaching people. But he never complained. He never did anything to complain to say, you know, I don't deserve this. Which he didn't deserve. He never deserved it. But he did it because he loved you this morning. I want you to stand all over the house. I don't know where you're at with your relationship with God. And I don't know if you had a, you've been having an active prayer life. I don't know. But there's one thing I do know that Jesus Christ loves you. He bled and died that you would have forgiveness. And all we had to do this morning is to ask. God, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. That's all he, that's all he wants you to do. I don't know about you. There's, there's been there have been some days that I have failed to ring the doorbell. And you probably can say the same thing. There's been some days that I failed to ring the doorbell. I failed to send my prayers and my pleas up to heaven. But you know, this morning I want to change that. I want to meet with him every day. I want to send my prayers up every day. I want a relationship with God. See, those priests had a relationship with God. They had a relationship. You can have a relationship with God this morning with every head bowed. Father, we do thank you. And Lord, we ask you this morning to help us. Help us in the remainder of this service. God, there's some young men and young ladies in this church, God, that need you as their Savior. Lord, they're running and they're trying at different things, Father. They're running and they're running and they're running. And I ask you, Lord, this morning to reach a hold of them and grab a hold of their heart this morning. Lord, let them find a relationship with you. Oh, let this church find a relationship with you this morning. We are believing and we're trusting in you, Father. I don't know about you this morning, 
in the men's house, but I feel the presence of the Lord. It's been, it feels like it has been a big wagon. Had to pull to the top of this hill. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is our Savior. And he came and he died for our sins that we might be saved. And I don't know about you. I don't know where you're at this morning with the Lord. But I know there's a peace in this house. And I know that you can find that peace. You can find it in Jesus. You can find it in Jesus. So here's Brother Mark. I, I'm saved, but I, 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 I've got deep. I've done things I ain't need to do. That's why we need to come back to the altar. Let that blood be applied again to cover our sins. Because Jesus loves us. So give a gentle altar call this morning. I want you to just find your place and pray. I want you to send up some prayer requests. Send up some prayer requests. I don't know if you can smell that incense or not, but I can smell it up here. It's an odor that God loves. So let's send some prayer requests in this morning. You might have somebody that's lost and needs to be saved. You might need to be saved yourself. You might have problems about things you don't know how to deal with. God is here. And he'll help you this morning. Let's find some place to pray around these altars. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. I can face tomorrow because 